Hibbs and Aberdeen would both like to think they'll put some pressure on Rangers in this season's championship race. The Edinburgh team finished third last time. Roy Atkins at Aberdeen were nearly relegated, but they're expecting to be at the other end of the table in this campaign. The two teams came together at Easter Road today and Jock Brown was there. There's one enforced change in that Hibbs lineup. Out, of course, is Willie Miller, who broke his leg at Kilmarnock last week. Another recent injury victim, Graham Love, makes his comeback after back and knee injuries. Manager Alec Miller now operates a three-man central defence with Andy Millen sweeping. Chris Jackson is likely to patrol the right flank and Graham Love the left, with McGinley, Jackson and O'Neill supporting the front two of Evans and Wright from the middle of the field. Aberdeen manager Roy Aiken names the same starting eleven for the fourth consecutive time and they will operate in a 4-4-2 formation. There's great interest in the functioning of the midfield four. Miller, Jess, Heatherston and Glass are all skillful, creative players, not renowned for tackling. But they'll have to battle back to defend when required. Jim Layton plays his 100th consecutive match for Hibbs, looking for his 38th shutout. It's been a remarkable Indian summer in the career of the 37-year-old Scotland keeper, whose next cap will be his 70th. Scotland's scoring hero against Finland was Scott Booth, who scored four times in Aberdeen's first four matches. The 23-year-old is on the brink of establishing himself as his country's number one striker after shrugging off the injuries which blighted his career last season. And the referee is the experienced figure of Mr Bobby Tate from East Kilbride. Well, the changing face of Scottish football demonstrated again by some impressive building work being done at Easter Road. Stands behind each goal now, and only the top tier of the stand here not being used, not quite ready for use, but will be ready in about two weeks' time. The lower half occupied by Aberdeen supporters. Our oh, match worthy of top billing in the country this afternoon starts with two very attack-minded teams on the field here. Aberdeen averaging three goals a match in their opening four games. They scored three twice, they scored four against Falkirk and two last Sunday against Celtic. And their only defeat so far, losing by three goals to two. Hibbs also with just one defeat, that shocker in the Coca-Cola Cup against Airdrie away, losing by two goals to nil. Otherwise, showing good form, 3-0 victory last week against Kilmarnock. The layoff from Evans. <laughs> Unorthodox by Evans, not much option though. Jess lighting it in there, there's Scott Booth with the header. He did well to get to that under severe pressure from Gordon Hunter. Well, Ian Jess here sending in the long diagonal ball and Hunter with Scott Booth, who got his head to that. Shot played by Darren Jackson. Here's Love. Starting his first match since the 10th of December when he was injured against Falkirk. Joe Miller in the counter attack. Pat McGinley trying to get back. That's very good play by McGinley. Well, they covered fully 50 yards there to make that challenge on Miller. An orthodox one from Miller. It's out to Woodcock. This is Jess, now Heatherston, Joe Miller, awkward, very awkward indeed, and Jim Leighton did well to get his body behind that, that could have squeezed in at the post, well a moment of alarm there for the Scotland goalkeeper, I don't think it's quite what Joe Miller intended, it turned out to be very treacherous indeed. Last playing it early, Millen. Sweeper. Strong challenge again by Ingalls. This is Keith Wright using his pace. He's away from Woodcock. This great play by Wright. Michael O'Neill arriving late in the box. Evans already there. That's for O'Neill. Fine effort. A great block in the second attempt by Stilders. Turned away there by Stephen Glass. What a terrific recovery there by Theo Stilders. Still under pressure though, as hips come forward. Wright helps it on, here's Jackson. Far post cross is too long, I think. Treated well by Darren Jackson. 
driver Evans his dodge back helping in defense relieving the pressure Booth on his own well tackled by Millen well that was great play there at the other end Pat McGinley controlled that shot superbly it wasn't held by Theo Snell there's Michael O'Neill was quick he thought he'd scored but Snell does made the save good thought forward here's Heatherston Joe Miller nimble play Glass showing too much of that to Hunter that's Miller very well held there by Leighton first class handling by the Hibernian keeper well this is very well struck with Joe Miller it really is good goalkeeping this for Leighton to hold this bouncing just in front of him He's playing a lot of passes. Patient in the build-up. Now it's Aberdeen's turn. Peter Heatherston. Trying to release Joe Miller. He did well to reach that. It's a good cross. Dodd's got a touch. And Glass couldn't get there. Well, Jim Layden having watched the Graham Love. He believes the full-back shouldn't have allowed Joe Miller to get the cross in but he certainly did well here now this is the complaint Jim Leighton had about Graham Love he's going in close on Joe Miller but it was rather softly and easily beaten there for that cross to come in Dodd's going to touch on and Glass was just out of reach and they know at the back invites Leighton to launch the ball downfield for Keith Wright to challenge against Ingalls a little bit of a nudge there by the hip striker while the ball was in the air and we have a free kick to Aberdeen 45 minutes of the first half are over we're into the stoppage time there's not much of that no goals in the first half and that's down to one remarkable save by Theo Snelders early in the first half he didn't do terribly well with a shot from Pat McGinley which bounced off his chest but he was brilliant when O'Neill went in on the rebound and that's the reason why this very evenly contested match remains all square at Hibernian nil, Aberdeen nil. Hibs playing down the Easter Road slope for the second half they'll welcome that opportunity and there's Keith Wright going through instantly a chance to get past John Ingalls who stood up strongly there and the linesman being invited to have an opinion as to whether or not there was handball there well John Ingalls under severe pressure here see as the ball is played through here it's Pat McGinley who plays the pass they're trying to get Keith Wright between the central defenders there there was the challenge across there was a hand used that's the question the referee and linesman are going on with that it's a poor kick out there by Snelders here's Darren Jackson Trying to make space for a shot at goal. Well, a very quick start by Hibbs. Well, very loose play there by Theo Snelders in goal. And Darren Jackson had that chance to put Hibbs ahead. Here's Jess. Good play by Jess. This is McKimmon. Joe Miller couldn't get there. McKimmy's disappointed in the pass. He knows he should have made it easier for his teammate. Dodge fouled Millen, the referee thought not, that's Joe Miller, and Dodge comes in on the far side, and that was a great chance for Aberdeen, Jim Leighton having words with Bobby Tate, the referee, I must confess it didn't look like a foul by Dodge on Millen, we see that again, as the ball was played forward here by Gary Smith, who collects this in front of Gareth Evans, it's in the air a long time, and it looked as though 
Millen was impeded by Dodge, but this turned out to be a good chance at a tight angle for Billy Dodds. Here's Jess. He's done well. Jim Waiting, telling Millen to leave that. Commanding goalkeeping once again. Well, this could easily have gone wrong here at the understanding not being good between the two defenders, but very good footwork shown again by Ian Jess. And then it was taken by Leighton. Well, something required, I think, to change the pattern of play for both these sides. They're going to win this match. It looks as though it could a run out and stalemate. We're past the three-quarter mark in the game. And here's Duncan Shearer being introduced to replay Scott Brook, who's been the victim of one or two heavy tackles. Although the impression is given that was not too happy to come up. That's a good sign. We shouldn't be happy about that. On comes Shearer. Can he win the match for everybody? Now we thought. Stephen Glass. Good play, heading the byline. A great chance there by Aberdeen. Stephen Tweed stepping in with the clearance. Billy Dodds and Duncan Shearer couldn't get to that. What an opening created there by Glass. Tweed did well. Surely too high for Joe Miller. And a disappointing end to that promising build up from Aberdeen. Goes with the header. Shearer's layoff. Joe Miller. Now Shearer. Terrific goal from Shearer. No answer at all from Jim Leighton. 18 minutes of the match left. The goal almost typifies the striking ability of Duncan Shearer. And Aberdeen going front. I just look at this. You can see him set himself here.
singles. Well taken down by Jess. Now he can hold off Michael O'Neill. Well, demonstrating once again his supreme confidence. Jersey holding by half for a clear foul. Ian Jess showing his annoyance there. Entitled to it, showing a little skill there and was on the move forward. Well, some great play here. Jess turning and twisting, moving away, going in front of Kevin Harper, and then the jersey was pulled. That was really a foolish foul to commit. This is Woodford. Five minutes left. Looks like next goal the winner. Here's Glass, that's good running again. Well, he's showing he has terrific stamina as well as anything else, Stephen Glass. What a good player he looks to be. Against Chris Jackson this time, it's been a very even contest with the two, but this time coming inside Glass was able to test Jim Layton. O'Neill. longer on the ball than Joe Miller would allow. Here's Michael O'Neill. Chance for the winner. Again, couldn't get back on the ball. The angle not quite right when it came off Sellers. Now there was Michael O'Neill getting away from McKimmy now, racing into the area. John Ingalls trying to get back in terms, putting him under pressure. The block gave it the rebound, but O'Neill couldn't get on the end of that. Michael O'Neill again, Harper trying to time the run, he's onside this time. He's through one and one in goalkeeper, this could win it. Well, a terrible finish from Kevin Harper, a striker in form. But once again, the offside trap was sprung, no question about that. His pace, enough to get him away from the Aberdeen defence, but this is a very disappointing finish. Hunter getting up well. Stephen Glass controls it, the final whistle goes. Honours oh, even in the end, that's probably just about right overall, although I suspect Aberdeen are shade happier to hear the final whistle. But the game set alight by Duncan Shearer's stunning goal in 72 minutes. The left foot volley which went thundering past Jim Layton, they'll be having a what about that there. But just two minutes later, an equally good goal, a different style, scored by Darren Jackson to give Hibs a draw. They certainly did not deserve to lose the match, but over the piece of draw, just about right between two sides who'll be in the top half, I'm sure, of the Premier Division. It's Hibernian 1, Aberdeen 1. Disappointed in the performance. I felt that uh, today we didn't pass the ball particularly well. I don't think we really put Aberdeen under a lot of pressure. And yet, at the end of the game, you had two chances, Michael O'Neill and Kevin Harper, to win the game. Michael was very positive. I felt Kevin should have taken the ball in a wee bit, uh, from a learning purpose for him. He should have taken the ball in and then tried to beat the goalkeeper. I felt he shot too far away from the goalkeeper. You switched this season to your three-man central defence, and you lost a goal in 72 minutes to Duncan Shearer. A great strike, obviously, but what was the Hibs view of it? Well, Hibbs' view was that Duncan linked in the game early, got the ball passed into him and he laid off, I think it was Joe Miller. Then he made a diagonal run. Now, when he made the diagonal run, he wasn't picked up by a Hibbs defender. He got acres of space, picked his, his, he's hit a magnificent strike by Jim. I don't think he, he, he meant to pick the spot he picked, but he's, <laughs> he's taken it anyway and it was a magnificent strike. But it was poor defending from our point of view in the initial layoff and, and no match in the run. Over the piece, what's your view of the Hibbs' start to the season? The hip start to the season has been uh, very positive. I know we're playing three at the back, but we're playing five in the midfield, and none of them are really defending tight players. Well, Roy, do you view that as uh, two points lost or a point gained? I think over the piece, a draw was a fair result, but you know, obviously going ahead, you know, with 20 minutes to go, um, and looking for the three points at that stage, just that little five minutes after you lose a goal, it's always a dangerous part in the game, and uh, we paid the price. But a great finish from both Jackson and from Shearer. You did make the point before the game that you knew your midfield four who can create would have to do some defending also. How do you feel that worked out today? I felt defensively as a team were much better today. Uh, I thought the back four you know, held the line better. Um, we just get caught that little bit for the goal, you know, trying to step up. Whether, whether uh, Jackson's offside or not, I need to watch that on television myself. Obviously the linesman kept his flag down, we've got to go with his decision, but it was a dubious one. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, I felt over the piece were team uh, worked harder defensively than we had been doing. Is there one thing you can pinpoint that uh, makes a difference this season from last season? 
really consistency and performance from each individual within the side. I think we've got to recognise our strength as a team. You know, we've got good individual players out there, but I'm looking for everyone you know, taking part today or taking part in every game, and that's where we'll get success from. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm always on the outlook for better players. You know, we've got a share issue in the offering at, at the club at the moment. Hopefully, it's going to be a major success. It'll then give me money available to bring in quality that I'm looking for to strengthen the squad, but every player out there is doing their bit at the moment.